All right, I wish you guys could smell how awesome this carrot pepper salsa has smelled while it's been cooking for the last hour. So we're down to our final step. We're going to um, add in our quarter cup of chopped cilantro. So when we do cilantro, your kitchen shears are your best friend for this. Um, so we want just the leaves of our cilantro. So I'm gonna kinda just pick through and um, take off our leaves and then I'm gonna cut our quarter cup. So the stems of the cilantro is where we're gonna get the really bitter cilantro flavor from. So we don't want those stems in our um, really good pepper jelly or in even our salsa or anything that we're using the cilantro for. So you wanna be very selective um, when you're doing your cilantro and take out all of those stems. And as you can see, it's so much easier to do it with kitchen shears than it is a knife. So while I'm doing this, we do have our um, jars in heating in our canner so that they're ready to go as soon as um, this last five minutes of cooking is up. And I think I've got just about enough. So we'll go ahead and with our kitchen shears, um, we're just gonna cut it into our quarter cup. I just like to get it in there and then cut it up into really fine pieces so that we don't get any of those giant chunks. When we were getting ready to start today, um, we've had several people in and out and they're really curious about the carrot pepper jelly and kind of don't think, or salsa, don't really think of carrots going in salsa. So we're really excited to see how this one turns out. So as you can see, kitchen shears are definitely the way to handle our cilantro. So as I put this in, um, we're gonna bring you guys up so you can see how pretty this is. And again, I wish you guys could smell through the camera because this has smelled absolutely delicious cooking for the last hour. So we're gonna go ahead and we're just going to start our timer. And we'll just go ahead and let this cook for five minutes and then we'll be ready to fill our jars. So while we do that, we're just gonna touch really quick on um, our canning supplies that we are going to be using today. So let me just slide my cilantro mess out of the way. And a handy ladle is the first um, tool that comes in really helpful while you're um, doing any kind of canning to get things in the jar. Your wide mouth funnel um, is definitely a huge time saver in having to clean jars and fill jars. Um, so it's a, it'll fit in a narrow mouth jar and in a wide mouth, so very important. Your jar lifter, so that you can safely get those hot jars in and out of your canning kettle. This is our air bubble remover and our headspace measurement. Um, so it just stair steps up, so a quarter, half, three quarter, and one inch on your headspace. So we'll show you how to um, use that as we get um, into filling our jars. Um, we've been talking a lot as we've been doing um, canning the food preservation classes and also just some of our um, just regular cooking classes about investing in some really nice equipment when you get started. Um, equipment that'll last a lifetime if you treat it right and have bought, purchased, or bought um, quality equipment when you start. Um, so that includes some, uh, some really nice kettles that are the right size for 
canning. And if you're gonna do jams and jellies, especially you always want a kettle that's bigger than what you're cooking. Um, so as it boils, you have plenty of space. Um, so some nice kettles. You can purchase everything in like a canning set, anywhere that you can buy canning supplies, um, which makes it really nice so that you have that set of everything ready to go. Um, so we'll just... Um, so one thing as we're doing this recipe, um, you'll say, well, everything low acid is supposed to be done in the pressure canner. So when we added that cup and a half of vinegar, we have created a higher acid um, content to all of this food. So it's a high enough acid um, that it can be done in the hot water canner. Um, making sure that you choose recipes from an approved source. So this is out of the ball, um, the complete guide to ball, um, or the complete guide to canning from ball. Um, so lots of fun recipes in there. So we're just about ready. So, um, final stir and as you guys have the liquid has really evaporated and that's why you cook it for so long as you want it to get really nice and thickened um, so when you're canning you don't want to bring those um, hot canning jars and set them over here on this cold stainless steel table so we'll just set our table or our, um, you can do like a wooden cutting board um, we tend to do just a folded up dish towel a lot of the time for when um, we do this. So um, we'll bring over our canning jars and we're within about 30 seconds of being done. So I'm going to go ahead and just stop our timer. And um, so we're going to place our funnel into the top of our jar. And I am going to turn this off and I have learned it is much easier for me to scoop things um, if we're not setting up on that burner. So give it one final good stir together. And we're going to go ahead and start filling jars. As you can see, this is going to be a really pretty um, And proper headspace is really important, so I'm just going to double check that we're going to leave a half an inch. So I probably am going to need a spoon because I bet I have more than run my air bubble. Um, get her out of there. And a half an inch, so I definitely have just a touch too much in there. And proper headspace is really important when we're processing. It gives that product room um, to boil while it's processing because we're going to put it in that very hot water. So we're going to call that hurt right on the money. We're going to take a flat and a ring, and we only do fingertip tight. So, oh, and I didn't wipe my jar lid off. I was very neat when I filled it. Um, <laughs> So we do want to make sure that we do have a clean top and um, I'll just wipe my rim off or my flat off um, so that we get that really nice um, seal. And just fingertip tight, top, fingertip tight, and that one's ready to go back in there. So our flats um, are a one use only. So once you've heat process them um, after you use what's in that jar, these just need to be thrown away. Um, we'll fill this second jar.
and that good half inch headspace. Let me take out just a teeny tiny bit. And it's really important when you do food prep or food preservation that you do follow all of the, the steps all the way through the process because you don't want to go all to all this work of chopping all these vegetables, putting everything together, and then skipping the step of proper headspace and ruining a bunch of your time and really good product. And just fingertip tight, and it's back in the jar we go. And I think we'll, um, so this we are going to, the recipe calls um, for processing at 15, for 15 minutes at our elevation here of just at 5,000 feet. Um, we add an additional 10 minutes to the processing time. So these will process for 25 minutes. Then we will pull them out and they need to be placed into a um, area where they're not gonna have any draft and allowed to sit for 24 hours prior to um, moving them. And I can already tell I got a little too much in this one. And it is always really important, and this is really chunky, so we do want to make sure we're taking out all of our air bubbles. And I took out just... So um, the, a great place to um, take them, your jars out and store them after they're um, processed is just a cutting board with a towel on top. Um, allow, set it away from like the air conditioning vents so that um, they have a nice place to cool for that 24 hours. Um, after your jars have cooled, you want to make sure you label them. Um, as you can see on the flats, there is a spot that shows, um, that's already built in for the dates. So you would just write carrot pepper salsa. Um, today is 828. And you do want to use all of your home canned product within one calendar, or three years. Um, So we'll make sure we get our air bubbles out and that seems to... Usually I'm pretty good on my headspace, but today this is so chunky. Perfect. Okay. See, and this is why we work in pairs so that everybody can keep out all of us straight of what we're doing. And the fun thing about the Ball Blue Books, um, or the Ball Blue Book, and then the um, two newer, um, the Complete Guide to Ball Canning, and then the newer one, off the top of my head, I couldn't tell you what the name of it is, um, is these are recipes that have been tried and used for a lot, for a lot of different things, so, um, and tested. But we know that they're, we're pretty safe in trying a new recipe out of these books because we know, um, Lots of people have approved them for um, being good tasting, which is um, important too when you think about how much time and effort it goes into getting everything to this stage ready to process. just that fingertip tight and that's about all the tighter you want to do when you're doing it with your bare hands on those hot jars 
And this says it's going to make five eight ounce jars, and we definitely have enough for a sixth jar. And um, a lot of times when you're canning, you're going to have a little less than it comes out to say, or a little more. Um, and a lot of times it's just on how much water is in your tomatoes or whatever you're canning. And um, there's going to be just enough of this left too to give us a taste test. So um, I'll be okay with that. This has a really sweet taste, or not taste, smell to it. Um, with the brown sugar, it, it almost has kind of that caramelized um, smell to it while it's been cooking. So, and just right at our half inch. And so when we do, when we heat jars and stuff, we always heat one more jar than what the recipe calls for. So just like this, where we have an extra one um, and we're ready to go. So with that, I think we'll sign off. Um, oh yeah, we can show you the loaded canner. Um, and so we will bring it um, to a boil and then we'll start our time. So, so we always want to have two inches of water over um, the jars so that they have plenty of water over them while they process. So we're going to go ahead and um, put on our lid and we're going to turn our heat up and these will come to a rolling boil and then we'll start our 25 minutes of processing. So with that, we hope you venture out and try a new recipe. And again, if you guys have any questions um, about any food preservation, give us a call.